In this video, we are going to download our data set into pandas and then perform data cleaning using some different techniques. Here I am on kegel.com. I have provided a link to this data set in the video description below. You can go to this link and click on download button to download this data set into a CSV. So I have that CSV file here. My data set looks something like this where I have uh, area type, availability, location size, the square foot area, etc. And all of these are called independent variables. And my dependent variable is price. Price is something that I'm trying to predict, okay? The price here is in Indian rupees, lakh rupees. This is 39 lakh rupees flat. This one is uh, 1 crore and 20 lakh rupees, okay? So remember that uh, we are using uh, supervised learning here. And in supervised learning, you need tagged or labeled data set. Okay, tagged or labeled data set is basically you have your input value and your output value. Based on that, you're trying to build your model. Now, if you are not installed it already, please install Anaconda distribution. This comes with data science technology stack, which is Jupyter Notebook, Pandas, Python, sklearn, etc. I have installed that already and I have created a new Jupyter Notebook here and imported few basic libraries that we'll need for this tutorial, okay? Once these libraries are Im imported, you should read the CSV file that I just had open into a pandas data frame. Here you can see that I have my data frame loaded with all the data from uh, the CSV file. And when you run shape, um, it shows you number of rows and number of columns in my data. I have 13,000 rows, which is decent enough data set. Now let me first examine the area type feature. And what I'm going to do here is I will uh, print a count of data sample in each of these area type categories. And the way you do that is you group by your data frame by area type, and then you aggregate the count. You can see that you have 87 samples where the area type is carpet area and you know these are different numbers. Now I'm going to keep my model very simple and for that reason I'm going to drop certain columns from my data frame. Okay now as such all of these columns are important but I'm going to drop let's say availability. I'm going to just assume that availability is not important in deciding the final price. Then society, then area type, etc. Okay and this is how you drop those columns and let me do df2.head. So after I drop those uh, columns my data frame looks something like this, where it has only location, size, total square foot, bath, and price. Now begins the data cleaning process. Data cleaning process starts with handling the NA values. And for that, I will use is null function. On data frame, when you run is null function and when you do dot sum, it will tell you the number of rows where a particular column value is NA. For example, I have total 73 rows where the value of bathroom is not available. Okay, so I'm going to drop all these NA values. Now you can actually do something else if you don't want to drop the column. For example, for bathroom, if I don't want to drop the 73 columns, what I can do is I can take a median of bathroom values and fill the NA values with that median value. Okay, but since my data set is 13,000 rows and the NA rows are pretty small in number. I can safely drop those rows. Okay. After dropping them, and by the way, for dropping, you can use drop NA function. And when you drop them and create this new data frame called DF3, you will find that this doesn't have any NA rows now. Once that is done, I'm going to explore the size feature. You can see here in the size that some values are 2BHK, but then there are some rows where it says 4 bedroom. So I want to really see what's going on with that particular uh, column. So I will do size 
and df3 size will give you a panda series on which you can call unique function that will give you all unique values now you can see that four bedroom and four bhk they are essentially same so to take into account uh, this kind of problems with the data set i will create a new column called bhk and the way you create a new column in a data frame is simply you can say something like this and this column is created based on the size column and what you want to do on this size column is apply some function okay now what type of function you want to apply you can take the string and you can tokenize it using the space and take the first token which is two so for example here is two here is four here is three okay and that will be your bhk value and to do that we can use python lambda function lambda x x will contain the column value for each of the rows one by one and on those value you want to apply some transformation now what kind of transformation you want to apply so first let's say this x is 2 bhk you want to split this string using space how do you do that x dot split so you do explode x dot split and space okay this gives you two tokens out of which you want to take first token which is zero okay and so let's say by doing this you are getting two or four etc but that is still a string which you want to convert to integer okay so we did this and now when you check our data frame you see this beautiful bhk new column being created where it has number of bedrooms in your apartment now when you do unique on this bhk column which is newly created column you'll find that you have these many different values of bedroom hall kitchen wow there are homes with 43 bedrooms in bangalore and i want to see like what kind of home that is so you can do df3.bhk let's say show me anything which has bhk greater than 20 and you find two homes like one home is 43 bedroom but the total square foot is 2400 see this looks like an error to me you cannot have 2400 square foot home with 43 bedroom okay so we are going to clean up these errors a little later in order to tackle these errors actually i need to um, explore this total square feet feature as well okay and first thing i want to make sure is that this feature is available in um, a single number okay so first let's let's quickly check something so i will do df3 dot total sqft dot uh, unique for example okay while doing that one thing i noticed is see sometimes i see this kind of value which is not just a single value it is a range i want to convert this into a single number and one of the ways is i can take an average of these two numbers okay so first let me see what kind of uh, variations i have in this total square foot feature and in order to do that what i can do is i can detect if a given value in total square foot column is float or not so first i will define a function called is float okay and the way this function works is i will try to convert a value in total square foot column into float and if it is not a valid value such as this range it will come into this accept block you know it will throw the exception when i try to convert it into float and here i can return false otherwise i can return true now i have this df3 data frame on which i will take total square foot column and apply this is float function when i apply this is float function 
it will re return true but I want to look at the values where it is not a valid float number so for that I can do this one this is a negate operation this will return a data frame back to me you can see that see and if you want to look at just few values you can do dot head here you can see I got all these ranges okay if I look at more values I also see cases like this where the value is in square meter it is in perch so you can see this is a typical problem in any data science project where your incoming data is not uniform it is unstructured it contains outliers it has data error it has a lot of problems and majority of the time that data scientist spends is on data cleaning so we are doing that data cleaning right now so to handle these non-uniformities what I'm going to do is anytime I have this range I will take an average of these two numbers anytime I have values like this I will just ignore those rows okay now if you want to make your model a little more sophisticated you can uh, do a unit conversion between square meter in into square feet you can also convert perch into square feet etc but I'm going to just tackle uh, these range values okay and for that I am going to write a Python function which takes this range as an input and it returns the average value okay so that function I'm just going to copy paste here that function looks like this where it takes input string we split it using this this sign and then if the tokens are two we convert individual tokens into float number and then we take the average okay otherwise we if let's say the number is your normal number then we convert it into a float okay so let's taste this function so first if you give this function a simple string let's say 2166 that it converts into float because it will go into this line here and it will convert and let's say if you take this particular range you see what it did is it took the average of these two numbers and if you have uh, cases like this let's say square meter let's see what it will do with that guy so here see it did not return anything which is fine so now I will apply this function onto my total square foot column and create a new data frame okay so remember that we are creating a new data frame at each stage in our data processing pipeline okay so until now we had df3 now I'm going to create a new data frame called df4 which is a copy of df3 when you do df3.copy it will create a deep copy of your original data frame and on this data frame my total square foot column will be equal to df4 total square foot on which I will apply this function now in apply you can write a lambda function or you can write a native Python function so I'm just going to apply this function okay after you apply the function you can do df4 dot head okay you can see that I have total square foot here now if you want to look at particular index so here I had 2128.50 and the index was 30 so index 30 you can access by saying df4 dot loc lock location basically and you can see that my total square foot is 2475 2475 because see I had 2128.50 and if you take the average of these two numbers I'll just take an average of these two numbers and that will be 2475 okay so this looks pretty good so so far I have cleaned up my total square foot column 
I have also handled my NA and I have removed some unnecessary features. So my data frame looks much better compared to uh, what I loaded it up with uh, in the initial phase. Okay, so that's all I had for this video. In the next video, we are going to cover some of the feature engineering and dimensionality reduction techniques.